sleeping and I should be sleeping in bed. Hi, this is Andy Burkowski from BGS AM640. We're here today talking about, I would say, the most anticipated game of the year, five years, decade, depending on where you want to put your particular uh, line in, Bioshock Infinite. Now, who are we talking to today? Uh, my name is Leone Manchandon. I work at Irrational Games, uh, Vice President of Studio Relations. Excellent. Now, Bioshock Infinite, for people who aren't familiar, just give us the overview, what's it like, and how is it new to the Bioshock brands? Okay. Bioshock Infinite is a first-person shooter where you play a character called Booker DeWitt, and he's a guy who's had like a troubled past. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say he's a veteran, he's an ex Pinkerton agent, and he's got a little bit of a debt with the wrong people. Certainly. Um, so he's got his life in the line, he's got a lot of stake, and he gets offered a deal, which is, you know, you can go to the sky city of Columbia, which seems to be lost in a cloud, and retrieve this girl, who's obviously important to these people, you don't know why, and they will wipe away the debt. So, you know, he takes the deal, he's like, how hard could it be? He goes to Columbia, finds her fairly early on in the game, but that's actually when it just starts, and it turns out to be a little bit different than he expected. In terms of the Bioshock franchise, is this the first protagonist where we seem to have more of an established backstory and understanding of who they are? Because in the first and second games, it was more of a mystery, and in the, in the second one, even you're not even entirely sure until halfway through. Would you say uh, it's a similar sort, uh, sort of situation, or are you taking a complete new approach in terms of the protagonist? Yeah, I think it's definitely an iteration on uh, okay. what we've done before. I think, you know, as, as a studio, it's very important to us to tell a story to our player and have our player be an active participant in that story. So we're always trying to find ways to tell the story in better, you know, mechanics. And, you know, it was definitely one thing on, on Bioshock Infinite, you're right, you know, you're don't really know who you are, you don't have a voice, you don't have that dialogue yet, and you're kind of like piecing it together as you go. Um, so, you know, in the case of Bioshock Infinite, um, you do have that backstory, you have that name, you have that voice, you have conversations with your companion character, okay. Elizabeth, oh, I see. Yeah. in the game, and so you you get to know her through those conversations, but, you know, you also get to know Booker a little bit better and his character. Um, so from a storytelling perspective, it you know just another opportunity for us to you know have the player be more engaged and, and uh, into the game and uh, get get some more story out. Of it. Absolutely. Now, one of the concerns I think of having this voiced and more established character of a protagonist mm -hmm. is that players won't be able to experience that amazing sort of ambiance that you got with things like the beautiful orchestral scores in the mm -hmm. first games, and in particular, the audio logs. Mm -hmm. It gave that kind of sense of putting little pieces of the puzzle together. Right. With this established character, how are you incorporating and making sure that we still have that sense of discovery, that mm -hmm. sense of you know the unknown, with still an established character? I think that was a fear of a lot of uh, new players. Yeah, out. I mean, you tell me you've just played the game, right? I, yeah, I would say that it does come through. I found a few audio logs, and it does give that sort of uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I think Columbia, the city of Columbia, is a very rich environment. Uh, you know, it obviously has a, has a lot of history. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people, and a lot, a lot of people live there that you meet and encounter. A lot of stories being told at the same time. Um, so, you know, what we're hoping to do is create an environment that's even richer than Bioshock was. You know, there's more, where there's more to explore, more to find yeah, yeah. Uh, for our players. So, you know, our hope is that, you know, if you liked that in Bioshock, that you're going to find more of that in Absolutely. Bioshock Infinite. No, you spoke to the environment there a little bit. Mm -hmm. Rapture was all about Andrew Ryan's dream, his view of the universe as, you know, extreme capitalism. With Columbia, how is this world crafted and what would be the sort of um, ethos that it's it's drawing on? Rapture had a very established identity. What is Columbia's identity? Right. I mean, I think that's a big question uh, for the player to discover okay. right, yeah. uh, as they go through their journey, you know, and, and, and in the in the build that you just played, you know, you first arrive in the city. You know, it looks very pretty. Um, there's lots of sunshine, blue <laughs> skies. Um, very like, different from the Rapture experience. Very, very almost different. antithetical in those ways. Yeah. Very different, but it's it's uh, you know it's got its own history. And mm -hmm. as you kind of walk and progress through the game, you you start to piece that together. You learn what that is. Um, you know, it, it, that's that's kind of what makes that Bioshock a Bioshock game. It's like trying to figure out what exactly is going on there. And I think, you know, one thing that is very clear and obvious is that there's obviously, you know, 
a vibe of there's a dark undertone, mm, right, okay, yeah. in, in the game, and you know, trying to discover like where that comes from. You know, there's clearly opposing ideals yeah. um, in this city, and you know, what is everybody's stance on that, and, and kind of what's your role in that, okay, and yeah. um, where that's going to go. Excellent. Now, in terms of the actual environment, I know that there's a big focus on um, the American founding fathers, mm -hmm. on their role, and they're kind of given this almost religious treatment, very much so, not almost, very, very much so, our religious treatment. Yep. Speaking to that a bit, what was um, a little bit of the motivation to go that route, to find something that usually are, these uh, founding fathers were representations of something that is so secular, so devoid of religious thought. Why bring those two ideas together? Well, I think it kind of has a lot to do with the time setting of the okay. game. Um, you know, the turn of the century, early 1900s, was a very interesting period in history. And, you know, kind of thinking back at it now, like, it, it, it seems a long time ago, but if you put it in perspective, like, all of a sudden they had, you know, electricity, mm -hmm. they had cars, there were gramophones, yeah. like, the technology <laughs> was moving so fast that, you know, at that point in time, like, everything was possible. It was a very optimistic time frame. Um, also very religious yes. uh, period. And, you know, one of the factions in the game that we call the Founders um, is kind of the group that you're referring to is, like, strongly based on those ideals. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's a very interesting um, topic to explore. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, kind of try to understand those drivers and, and what that might cause. Okay. Yeah. Um, in, in, in the in the game, and uh, you know potentially what that might mean to you as okay. a player, right? The one interesting thing with my time playing it, it's something that I think Bioshock, the first team, really didn't have. They're a little more extreme in um, Columbia's view of race. I don't want to give anything away, obviously, but very right. soon in the game, you're faced with something in this beautiful, sort of majestic and idealized world that, to our senses, is quite shocking and absurdly racist and obscene. Um, why make the choice to kind of go that route, and will a player experience more opportunities like that? Without giving too much away, because I know right. everyone doesn't want to be spoiled for this one. No spoilers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah, like kind of going back to the time period, you know, that was a, that was a, a very apparent feat yeah. at the time. Like, if you would have lived in that period, you know, this is a, what you would have encountered, and you know, we weren't there, but arguably worse. Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, so it's it's a very um, you know emotional period of, in time, mm -hmm. and you know, it had a very large impact on society, a very culture. Um, so skipping past that to us wasn't acceptable. Like it's something that needs to be addressed. And you know, I think the questions that it raises um, to you as a player, you know, it's like where, where, how does that make you feel? Yeah. Like where do you stand in that? And I think if you kind of draw a meta comparison back to Bottom Cup One, where you know people really like the multiple choices that they eat, that were available to them, and you know, we kind of look back at that and say, like, yeah, that was that was great. And we, and, and we're very humble that people liked it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, taking a step further and speaking more to you, you know, as a player and, and what you feel emotionally when you're confronted with these kinds of things, um, I think it's, a, it's something that, you know, we see a lot in other media and movies and books. Like, these topics are addressed head on. One of the most popular movies of last year, Django Unchained, very much goes into the same sort of similar thing. Right, <laughs> right. So why would you not be able to do yeah. that in games? So uh, we didn't want that to be a barrier to us. We didn't want to constrain ourselves and just not touch the subject yeah. because it's sensitive. Absolutely. In terms of gameplay, you know, for people who are completionists like myself, it's always the numbers they get excited about beforehand. It's always what sort of collectibles there's going to be, um, if there's a big focus on ancillary content, and without, I know it's always, especially nowadays, very, very difficult to give a time frame, but how long will people be able to play this sort of world, depending on the play style? That's always the range, and in terms of collectibles, what sort of things will we be collecting? Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, that's a tough question, yeah. because, you know, like you say, like everybody has such a different mm -hmm. play style, um, and it varies very, very much. Like, I, yeah, I've seen people play one section that takes some people hours and takes other people five hours. Yeah. You know, because they do go into, like, all the solid explore. Well, just playing the initial uh, entry to the game, 
there's so many opportunities to go into every little store to play with you know every little animatronic thing that happens we were playing for just uh literally the first scene of the game for about an hour so right. i guess that kind of speaks to that yeah i love it it's very dense it's very rich you know there are things like audio blocks and escapes i don't know if you uh, Would you say that it's longer than the experience of either Bioshock 1 or 2 or around a similar size? I think it's about a similar, a similar, similar size as the Bioshock 1. Okay, for um, Bioshock 1. Yeah, roughly. I think the space is, is like, it's very comfortable. There's like a ground that you cover as a player. Yeah. Um, but it's also very rich, so, um, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard unless you play, just keep playing, just keep playing. That. Yeah. Uh, one of the issues I think with um, the first few games, not necessarily an issue, but one of the concerns some players had, was kind of a sense of being trapped and having that little word. It was, you know, part and parcel with the world of Rapture, you're literally going through tubes. Now with Columbia, we've exploded into the sky. Would there still be that sense of one linear path, or will the player have some opportunities as an established character to stray? Right. I think the Gosh Infinite uh, players actually have a lot more tools when they're two-locked. Okay. Um, you know, in their combat, in their movement, uh, there's a lot of variety, um, a larger set of variety than there was in Gosh Um So I think that, um, you know, people looking for that and hoping to see that, I think, um, we appreciate that. You know, there's uh, in the part that you just played, you know, we kind of give the player an introduction into Very the world. Much, yeah. And like the further into the game you get, the wider the cones you get, so to speak, and you know, the your environment that you're in for the environment becomes uh, much more open. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot more variety in terms of like adding the skylines mm -hmm. to it, right? And then being fun on all the skylines. You know, having the companion character, Elizabeth, and she's got a lot of new opportunities. Uh, personally, just to end it off, what do you think players will get from this experience once the final credits are playing Bioshock Infinite? Because I think in the first Bioshocks, there really was that feeling of completion, and especially in the first one where completely thrown upside your head with the realization of you know the main antagonist. Right. How will we feel, you think, uh, after we're done again? Right. Um God, I mean what I hope yeah. <laughs> you would uh, experience after that is, you know, I hope that, you know, you would feel that you just had a very intense experience that is unlike anything you've ever experienced before in in a game or a movie for that matter. You know, I think uh, telling a story is really important to us. Mm -hmm. Gameplay is really important to us. So those two things, like if you end the game and you sit back on your sofa and ask yourself, like, what just happened? Like, I've never experienced anything like this. I think we would be very happy. There we go. So make sure you pick up Bioshock Infinite. When can players pick it up and for what systems? Uh, March 26th. Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't miss out, this is BGS for AM640.